What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Sean O'Malley reacts to UFC rigging his fights. Sugar Sean O'Malley and Patty Pimblett have one thing in common. They've both won narrow decisions over very tough opponents, with O'Malley narrowly defeating Peter Yan and Pimblett narrowly defeating Jared Gordon. As some members of the MMA community have theorized, the UFC has been hard at work behind the scenes making sure the two continue to win. During a recent appearance on Andrew Schultz's flagrant podcast, O'Malley was asked about the fight-fixing theory. I mean, I guess... Like, so what, who would be the one to rig it? I, I feel like you've seen that. I feel like that's always kind of been a thing every once in a while when something happens. They're like, oh, it's crazy. But the the thing you're right about UFC needing stars right now, that's why yeah. I feel like I'm in such a good position. Because mm. I do feel like, I mean, who you could argue there, I'm not the number one guy right now. But I think once this next fight happens, plays out, I win. I will be the biggest guy in the UFC. And by the end of the year, I'll be the biggest athlete in sports by the end of 2024 but i do think i i definitely don't think the ufc's rig i don't even understand how that would be of course the claims of the ufc rigging fights have remained unfounded with little proof to back up the allegations with plenty of bad blood between o'malley and chito vera heading into their rematch next year a win would certainly see the bantamweight champ emerge as a true blockbuster superstar Next up, let's take a look at Leon Edwards reacts to Patty Pimblett interview. During a recent interview, Patty Pimblett alleged that Leon Edwards knocked out Ian Gary in training. The news was shocking given the timing of the revelation, with Gary recently involved in a public split with Team Renegade. While discussing the upcoming Gary vs. Luke fight with Sky Sports, Pimblett dropped a bombshell. See, Ian Gary doesn't deserve a title shot, lad. Come on. What's his, Leon's already knocked him out in training, so we don't need to know about that. Fans were quick to find an old Instagram post from Gary back in November of 2022, where the Irish star indicated that Edwards hit him with a flush head kick in training that sent him to the hospital days later. In response to the claim, Edwards shared a separate interview with Sky Sports that he didn't knock Gary out in training. As he did state, Gary also wasn't kicked out of Team Renegade per se, the team simply didn't believe he fit the culture of the gym. Basically, the gym decided that he just wasn't fitting for the gym. Wow. Yeah. Just, it was two different, the culture in our gym, and just like, that social, like, he's like a talker, social media guy, he brings his cameras everywhere, he's, he's late to sessions, it's just like, two different cultures. What one is it, you know? Like I said, I wish him well in his career. I've got nothing good or bad to say about him, you know? Like, the coaches decided that they didn't fit into the gym. He wasn't the first gym he got kicked out of, <laughs> right? While Gary is still outside of contention for a title shot, if he emerges victorious from his scrap with Vicente Luque, he could find himself booked to fight a top five opponent. Next up, let's take a look at Dana White goes off on UFC sponsor. UFC CEO Dana White has never shied away from ruffling feathers. During the UFC 295 broadcast in New York, White hosted former US President Donald Trump as a guest of honor, with the pair making a televised walkout on the broadcast. The two have had a long relationship, with Trump hosting UFC events many years ago during the dark ages when the sport wasn't widely accepted. In return, White spoke at the Republican National Convention in support of Trump several years back, endorsing the embattled candidate. Recently, while speaking with comedian Theo Vaughn on his This Past Weekend podcast, White revealed that, on one occasion, a big UFC sponsor wanted him to take down a social media post with Trump. White, unsurprisingly, wasn't going to be swayed. I posted a video for Trump, right, mm -hmm. on my personal social media, and one of our big sponsors called and said, take that down. You know what I said? Go f yourself. Yeah. You vote for whoever you want to vote for, and I'll vote for whoever I want to vote for. That's how this works. So far, it's unclear exactly which sponsor White got into the heated spat with, or if the situation resulted in the two companies going their separate ways once the sponsorship agreement expired. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at UFC updates. Heading into this weekend's middleweight main event bout between Brendan Allen and Paul Craig, let's take a look at today's UFC updates starting with a last-minute change to this weekend's card. With Johnny Parsons out, Udos Medic will now take on Moktobek Orobai in a fight that will see Medic look to pick up his third straight win, and Orobai look to make his successful UFC debut. To date, Orobai has only lost once in his career, a decision back in 2020, which has seen him bounce back by winning six straight. MMA insider Alex Behunin also provided an update 
on Cesar Almeida, who we previously reported earlier in the week, was forced off of this weekend's card. According to Behunin, Almeida was forced to undergo surgery for an infection that was not responding to antibiotics. It was reportedly successful, with Almeida hopeful to return to training in a month's time if everything goes to plan. This week also saw news surface that Miles Johns has been temporarily suspended by the Nevada State Athletic Commission as a result of a flag drug test surrounding his recent win over Dan Argueta in late September. So far, his case has not been discussed at an NSAC hearing, with a suspension and a decision on whether his win will be overturned to be discussed then. Shifting gears to some fight announcements, a fight between Themba Garimbo and Kiefer Crosby has been reported for a February 3rd event. However, the UFC has yet to confirm the bout or the event itself. The bout will see Garimbo look to pick up his second straight victory inside the octagon, while Crosby will be looking to bounce back from a UFC 293 loss to Kevin Jusay. Last but certainly not least in the way of UFC updates, we have a bout between Mahmoud Muradov and Alyaskab Kizriev, announced for the previously mentioned February 3rd event, with a poster Muradov shared on social media, seemingly indicating that the card will be held in Las Vegas. The bout will see Kizriev look to keep his unbeaten streak alive, while Muradov will look to build on a win over Brian Barberina this summer. Next, let's take a look at Aljamain Sterling receives offer from UFC. On the heels of Aljamain Sterling's loss to Sugar Sean O'Malley, there's been a lot of speculation about what the future holds for the former champ. While the expectation prior to the fight was that he would move up in weight, he has since called for a rematch with O'Malley. Speaking in a video for his YouTube channel, Sterling revealed that he was offered a fight with Calvin Cater for his featherweight debut. In addition, Sterling was also offered two other fights. However, they were reportedly both against friends, so he was uninterested in accepting either offer. Cool. Well, um, breaking news, I was offered Cater. Um, amongst three others, two, two other, other guys were actually friends, so I said respectfully I would actually like to decline those. Um, one of them was coming off of a loss. <sighs> Cater was the highest ranking opponent out of all of them. Yeah, like I, I like Cater. I think Cater's a, a stand-up dude. I'm just not really looking to to go up and take a chance. Just like I don't mind taking a chance, but I'm not going up to say, hey, I'm coming here to, for second place. Like if I go up, I'm going up to be number one. Like there is no half-assing this process. So far, Cater has remained tight-lipped on the situation, with no indications of whether he's accepted a fight against the former bantamweight champion or not. With Chito Vera set to get the next crack at the bantamweight title, there seems to be a logjam of contenders at 135 pounds, with Murab Devashvili also eager to get a crack at the belt. With that in mind, it'll be interesting to see what the new year holds for Aljamain Sterling. Next, let's take a look at UFC reveals new testing policies. The Nevada State Athletic Commission has ratified new guidelines for drug testing in regard to the threshold for GW1516, DHCMT's long-term M3 metabolite, clomiphene, a term balone metabolite, and SARMS. NAC Executive Director Jeff Mullen put the news into everyday terms explaining that the organization has essentially established new thresholds for what is considered a failure in regard to the previously mentioned substances and metabolites. In a statement included on an official proposal, Mullen was quoted by MMA Junkie as saying, any positive test of a proposed substance which is below the respective proposed threshold would be considered atypical, requiring additional investigation. This investigation may include, but not be limited to, review of the fighter's test history, interviews, and possible additional testing, the results will remain atypical, absent evidence that would negate the presence of mitigation associated with the below threshold amount. If additional evidence eliminated mitigating circumstances, the case would proceed through standard disciplinary proceedings. Hunter Campbell was in attendance at the meeting, where he spoke in favor of the new guidelines, explaining that the UFC and USADA have already adopted similar thresholds. Next, let's take a look at Alexander Volkanovsky reacts to next UFC fight. After suffering a devastating loss to Islam Makachev at UFC 294, Alexander Volkanovsky is eager to return to the win column in a big way. Heading into the new year, the UFC has announced that Volkanovsky will defend his featherweight title against Ilya Topuria in a highly anticipated fight that will see Volkanovsky look to hand the streaking contender his very first loss. In a video for his YouTube channel, Volkanovsky was joined by Dan Hooker to discuss his UFC 298 return in February. Excited for this fight again. He's 14-0, young, hungry, uh, obviously a lot of hype around him. 
He's as confident in it as ever. He's doing videos with roses and whatnot. So, uh, you know, if I've ever been in a good, better, I don't think I've ever been in a better position to really humble someone. <coughs> I can't wait to do that. And I get to do it in front of all you guys. So I'm looking forward to that. With the bout being Volkanovski's first since his loss to Makachev, many fans have expressed concern that he could be in for another loss after having his chin cracked. As a result, Volkanovski sits as just a slight negative 180 favorite on betonline.ag to Torporia's status as a plus 155 underdog. If Volkanovski can pick up a win over a streaking contender like Torporia, it will signal to the rest of the division that his era isn't ending anytime soon. The MMA community roasted Conor McGregor after Conor's coach, John Kavanaugh, went on the MMA hour and said, Yeah, okay, it's a knockback if we're hearing it was April, but now it's July. But it's not the end of the world. Mm. You know, it, it is an extra couple of months. It's, it's not great, but hey, you're, you're enjoying your training at the moment. Let's just keep that going. If this is true, then that will rule out McGregor for a UFC 300 comeback. Fans reacted to this by saying, summertime, what year? Listening to the same old tune the last three years. LOL, past caring at this point. Clowns led by clowns. McGregor is done. Just retire, bro. He's washed up, drugged up, and juiced up. He ain't never coming back. He's done. I'm over it at this point. It's gotten ridiculous. Six months steroid suspension. That's scandalous. Three years out, if true. Top comments. Honestly, I think this is helping Tony way more than hitting a punching bag or training combos that he's already did a million times. The older you get, the faster you run out of stamina, and being able to stop that is way more important than punching a punching bag. How can Jones come back and fight Stipe when Tom is literally interim champ? Dana has lost it. Gotta have Pereira and Oliveira on the same card in Brazil. If you can defend two belts at two different divisions, I think it should be okay. Not many champ champs have defended both belts simultaneously. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.